Hey, N4H and H here. Okay, I want to talk to you about time sync related to FT8 operation. So, um, let me let me fix this to where you can see this clock message. You see right there, your clock is 1.8 seconds behind. Okay, I want to show you how to correct that. Just moving me back up here in the corner. Um, actually, so because because of what we're doing, let me move myself to, I guess, bottom left. There we go. Now, um, I'm going to minimize this and go to WSJT-X. You see, I've, I've got a program here called JT Sync installed and running. Now you can download that. Just you, you know, Google search it, whatever Duck Duck Go search, which is my preference. Um, but I want you to see all of this, all this pink in here. And if you look at the DT column, the the delta time, the time difference between my computer's clock and that station, uh, the ones that are in pink mean that's a warning because you're outside of the threshold that's necessary for. Uh, FT8 communications, which is plus or minus one second. You've got to be within plus or minus one second um, accuracy. And so, because the reason is, if you look and if you look down here, you can see it graphically. The staggering. Each of these is a, a QSO in progress, and you know the lighter is the weaker signals, the bolder is the stronger, and you can see this staggering here as um, I'm out of sync. And so that's going to make it difficult for me to make any contacts unless their clock happens to be off as far as mine is. So that's where JT Sync comes in. By the way, you notice that it's tracking uh, here. The uh, it's tracking with um, the decode of uh, WSJTX. So you don't want this, okay? You know. And so um, there's a couple ways to go about this. There's this clock symbol here, synchronized clock. And this is going to um, right time.google.com. I'm going to click get, and it's looking up time. Time successfully retrieved. Okay, and then I'll click the set to accept that. All right, and I'm going to go back in here now, and I'll I'll, I'll do a refresh. This bottom at the lower left. You know, if you notice that you're not able to get contacts, in you if you look at JT Sync, it's a free download. Now, see, here's one that's 1.4 seconds off from me now. Uh, but let's see how accurate I am. So I'm going. You and by the way, you think well, you can just hit the refresh. See, it's still showing me 1.8 seconds behind. I don't believe that. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to close that session. Um, if you're familiar with what cache is, C-A-C-H-E, you'll understand why it's going to be different now. So time.is, see, time is exact within 0 .006 seconds. So you can't just simply hit refresh and get the time.is to recalculate. That's plenty close there now. So if I go back to minus, and you see very few warnings, and that means that since I'm dead on, that station there is... 1.1 seconds off, uh, whether it be negative or positive, you don't want to see that number go above 1.0. And uh, see, and I'm, you know, I'm getting contacts are showing up here being decoded. And uh, now the waterfall down here is also going to be, uh, things will be lining up. So I would be able to make contacts now. Now, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to intentionally, watch this, this guy is 1.1 off. I'm going to right-click and say sync with this station. And see, it shows me that he's negative 1.1. I'm going to click the update. You have to click the update, even though you think, you know, that it meant if you click on one and say sync with this station, you still got to go down here and click the update button. This is just going to tell you how far off you are. Okay, but I don't, I don't want to sync with him. All right, now... Look at there. <laughs> See all that pink? That's me. I'm far off because I'm with him now, and he was off. 
So this is what you don't want to see is this pink over here in JT Sync. Like I say, it's a free download. You don't even have to install it. There is an option to install it. And um, if you think about it, you know, like if you're in a situation where you don't have an Internet connection, uh, you'd be able to set the clock on your computer by using your radio if you happen to be working FT8 um, because it's doing this through RF. Now, uh, let me show you another thing. So a lot of those are off now because of me. I'm off myself with that one station I synced to. I'm going to click the calculate without clicking a station here. And it's telling me that based on the average offset, in other words, the average amount of time that is different between all of these stations and me, I'm an average of 1.01 seconds off. So I can just click Calculate and then hit Update, and that should get me close. So we'll see here on the next cycle. Yeah, see, all white now. And a bunch of, you know, there's a 0 0.5, uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. And let me go back and check. Uh, okay, again, I can't really trust refreshing that. I'll just open another session. Time.is. I'm exact. Within minus 0 0.092 seconds. And that test was within 0 0.025 seconds accuracy, plus or minus there, they tell you. So that's plenty, plenty, plenty close for FT8. So everything's now synced again. So just a review on this. JT Sync, you can download for free. Uh, see, here's one that's 1 1.6 off. And so, but let's say somewhere you don't have an internet connection, and uh, but you're using the your radio and you've got JT Sync operating. And by the way, this when it downloaded, it was just a zip file. I unzipped it to, I'll tell you, show you where I put it. So let me, so, you know, complete disclosure here on this video. Um, I unzipped it to my C drive to a JT sync folder and there's one executable in there and I just right clicked, oops, right clicked, send to desktop, create shortcut. That's all I did. And, um, and, and so then that's what created this shortcut here. And literally it just double click it. This opens up, click listen, let it do a, a listen. And then it'll sync up with your WSJTX band activity window. So again, if I go up here, if I click any one of these stations and I want to sync up with them, um, I, I can, you know, I'm just saying, let's see, I see a zero, zero. He's dead. His clock is dead on it with mine, so, uh, and I just found out from time.is that my clock is dead on. So the ones I'm seeing here that are a little, are a little bit off, well, they just haven't checked theirs in a, in a little bit. But again, it's within the plus or minus one second window. But um, you can always, if you just go in here and you don't see so much pink, <laughs> all right, you're pretty close. Uh, but you can click calculate and see right here it says based upon an average of all of these stations, their clocks, I'm within 0.24. So, I mean, that would work. And I could, you know, that, there's no problem. Even if I hit update, I'm good. But if I go back to one of these, this pink right here, 1.6 off, and I right click, uh, selected it, right click, sync with this station, see 1.6 off, and then I hit update. Now watch, watch what happens. Just, again, I showed you this earlier in the video. Just wanted to give you another pass here to see it. Um, oh, let me refresh. Look at all that pink. So that's not good. Here, here's somebody that's far enough off that they're within 0.8 of me. I would be able to make a, a contact with that one probably. But, you know, this is bad. So, again, now I'm going to calculate, and it shows that, indeed, I'm negative 1. 0.42 out of sync with the average of all of these stations. So I can hit update and that's going, going to get me really close. Um, let me do a uh, refresh. 
It'll pick it up on the next decode. There we go. And see, now I'm back to a bunch of white. And let's just go see what time dot is says. Said last time was 1.5 seconds. Um, exact within plus minus point uh, plus point zero eight three seconds and a plus minus point zero one eight second accuracy of that uh, time dot is uh, test analysis of my clock. So. Uh, again, you can do it with the calculate, take an average, and if you accept it, you hit the update button. Um, and, and Or you can pick some station and you go, you know, hey, I trust this guy. I think he's probably keeping his clock pretty close. Then you could uh, right-click sync with this station and then hit update. It's telling you that I'm 0.1 off from him. So if I think I'm 0.1 off, I'll just hit update. Yeah, let me let me mention one other thing about this. Oh, refresh. Um, it's only as far as WSJTX is concerned is concerned about the seconds. You could be two hours off, and it would work as long as the seconds are right. I know that sounds crazy, uh, but it has to do not with the exact time. It has to do like in logging. It has to do with what you're seeing going on down here. The 15 seconds of transmit receive cycles um, which are constant and that's why you have this button here for transmit even first you can decide whether you want to transmit um, be, be, well because some people are transmitting when you're receiving some people are transmitting when you're transmitting some people are receiving when you're receiving so you can flip that flip that um, in case you're having a trouble you know getting somebody so it's these 15 se second intervals and that's what you want to start receiving at the same time someone else is starting transmitting because what's happening is and this is the reason that this works with weak signals is they are transmitting so for example like if i was going to send cq so i go down here to tx message six it's going to transmit cq and 4h and h and my grid square so it's just going to scream that out there for 15 seconds and um you know if somebody else picks it up, it's because, you know, their, their receive started at the exact same time my transmit started. And then it may take, there's some error um, information going out as well. Um, not unlike, you know, with other communications protocols, you've got some error checks. But as long as everything lines up, it knows to listen at this instant, okay, for that type of information to come through. And that's what helps it decode information that's what we say below the noise floor. Uh, up to about negative 25, you see here on the dB scale, up to about negative 25 dB, it should still be able to decode. So I, there's a negative 23. I might would have a chance at making contact with that station. So that's the importance of being accurate within the second uh, plus or minus is that it, you want to make sure that when you're transmitting, the information you're transmitting, the receiving stations are expecting that type of information to be to be sent. And it gives a little bit of a leg up, if you will, on being able to, because it knows I'm listening for a CQ and I'm listening for a call sign in a, in a grid square, that sort of thing. So that's the importance of keeping this accurate. So again, you could either calculate... To get back on and you, again you, you can do this if you're traveling you're somewhere let's say you're up on a summit for soda and you got your laptop and your radio and you're doing some uh ft8 some people do that um not as many as as are doing cw and, and, and sideband but if you were in that situation you and you had no internet connection then uh you would be able to use jt sync because of wsjtx uh running because this is getting the info from WSJT uh, X. It's a um, you know a um, complementary program, so to speak. This one is feeding off of that one. So this would be able to get the time pretty close just by looking at what's what you're receiving and doing calculate and taking an average of all of their clocks and saying, well, you know, if I average all of those out compared to you, you are 0 0.04 different. And I could hit update, and I, I wouldn't need to do it though if I was 0.04 different. 
But if you averaged all of those out and it came back and said I was 1.5 different, then I'd want to hit the update button. Does that make sense? I hope so. Um, and again, even built into this, as long as you have an internet connection, you can get close by by doing the um, the get here, clicking this little clock symbol and clicking get, and then it'll go out there. And then if you like what it came back with, you just hit that set button like I did earlier. And, uh, you know, and then, of course, you can just pick out one individual station, right-click, sync with this station, and then you, it tells me that I'm 0.1 off from that station. And if I like it, if I trust it, I just hit update. In fact, one more time here, uh, I'm going to do the refresh. I will go and see how close I am with the time.is. 0.3 seconds behind. Okay, so um, that means the station I just synchronized with is 0.3 seconds behind. We would, the, either either of us can still make contacts. That's not an issue. So um, I will do this. I'll calculate the average again, and I'm off 0.12 average. So I'm going to click update and check time.is. Ooh, wait a minute. What happened here? Still 0.3 off? Yeah. Maybe so. Let me try it one more time. Time dot is 0.2 seconds behind. All right, so I'm going to go back. That average wasn't really all that accurate, right? But I have the luxury. See, now, out on a mountaintop, that would be plenty. There'd be no problem in making contacts. But to get back to exact, I'm going to do the get and let it retrieve time because I do have an internet connection. I wouldn't have that necessarily out on a soda summit. All right, and then I'll set, refresh, and also going to go back out here to time. Let me close some of these down. Okay, that's good enough. Let's do another one time dot is still point two <laughs> all right let's see here what's going on with that i'm going to shut down the browser and come back in yeah oh, yeah see there you go don't let that mess you up like that. See, I was opening some new windows, and it worked for a bit, but, boy, it just started caching and caching and caching, so it was reading old data out to me. I'm within .005 seconds accuracy, and the an analysis is accurate to .025 seconds. So uh, I go back into WSJT8 now, uh, X now, <laughs> WSJT8, and I guess a short for WSJTX running FT8, right? I go back in here now, and, um, you know, I start looking at some of these. Let's, let's check the next decode cycle. Okay, there we are. See, within point 0.1, point 0.2, and I know I'm dead on, so they're well within the boundary of me being able to work them according to the delta time field here. Again, delta time, meaning how much difference between my computer clock and that station's computer clock. Okay, so I hope you found this helpful and informative. Don't forget, you can download JT Sync for free. I want to shout out to one of my VIP Patreon supporters of this channel, who is a um, FT8 guru, and that would be Kurt, uh, KB9JQU. Kurt turned me on to the JT Sync software, so I appreciate that. You know, there's other things you can do. You can go into your um, computer's um, system registry, and there's a special time interval. I'll show you that as a bonus here since you watched the video this far. Um, you go down to this address. Okay, I'm not going to read all of that out to you, but because uh, I did cover, I did put it into the document I made for the executive and VIP Patreon support team uh, members. And if you want to join that team, go to www.patreon.com forward slash N4HN8. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com forward slash N4HN8. Literally, without the support of the Patreon team, this, this channel ceases. I uh, would not be able to justify the, the time and the expense. And so their, their monthly donations of $5, 10 or $20 help offset the cost of, of me doing this. 
And those who pay uh, 10 or 20 a month, their executive and VIP level, uh, have access to uh, these documents that I produce, uh, set up documents for various uh, radios, so far four different uh, Yesus, uh, the FT-891, 991A, FTDX-10, and FTDX-5000 MP. Um, for those new to amateur radio, there's a glossary of amateur radio terminology that even gets into, uh, you know, everything from propagation to what is FM to the knobs of the Q signals and then also the knobs and buttons on the radios, any radio, just a generic explanation of what they all mean. And um, and then also, like uh, like I said, those setup documents for those various rigs and a few other things, um, including the setup document for an FTDX-10 and FT-8, getting them all synced up and, and, and operating. So uh, I did show that path in that um, document, but it's called special pole interval here, and uh, you want to switch it over to decimal. So I've got it set on 3,600 seconds. That's what that is. So every hour, 60 times... Six, uh, 60, um, every hour it will update my clock. So that's what that is. But honestly, um, that is not as reliable as JT Sync, and JT Sync is able to do it just over with using your radio receiver rather than requiring an internet connection. So, again, thanks for watching the video this far. Uh, consider joining that Patreon support team to help me keep this channel up and running. And um, again, patreon.com forward slash in for H N H. And if you would, please give the video a like, smash that thumbs up button. I would appreciate that very much. It helps out with YouTube um, tremendously. Also consider subscribing to the channel. If you do subscribe, be sure to click the notification bell so you won't miss a video. I generally put out one or two videos a week. Um, if there's an urgent message I need to get out, I may put a third video out. For example, I'm watching that FT-710 and the info coming out about it, and I'm trying to get that out to uh, the, the viewers of this channel as soon as I find anything out. Like when they when they when I put out the video when it was a rumor, the very next day it was made official. I got that video out within an hour or two um, when it was made official. So I'm trying to keep current on the FT-710 information. I do have some information I've received, but I haven't been able to verify it yet, so I'm not going to put it out on the channel just yet. Um, not sure when I'm going to post this video, but um, it may be, may be just in, within a week or two that I'm going to post this video from shooting it. But I'll, I'll uh, keep you up to date on that FT-710 if you uh, subscribe to the channel. And be sure to click that notification bell. Consider sharing this video, social media, text message, email with you know someone you think might would benefit from it. And I well, I hope you found it at least enjoyable and hopefully informative. And uh, so I want to say thank you uh, for watching the videos on this channel and for supporting the channel. Those of you who joined the Patreon support team, seventy-three from N4HNH.